Good afternoon, my name is Spencer Goodwin from Team 18 and this presentation regards design phase three of Shade Blade, the automatic blind system. This began with a concept generation exercise in which our team split up individually and create a wide range of concepts. We did this keeping in mind our target audience, DIY customers, college students, and those looking for a budget solution to automatic blinds. We believe this to be a valid group due to the fact that our, most of our competitors' products are priced 30 to $40 higher than our product will be priced. After coming back together and reviewing all the designs as a group, we were left with a myriad of designs for each different, myriad of solutions for each different component in the system. This was true for the power supply. We were unsure if we were going to use solar power, battery power, or a plug-in, and also true for the user input and the torsional component that would actually twist the blinds. We were unsure if we were going to provide input through um, solar, a light sensor, computer, or a remote. And we were unsure, unsure if we were going to use a servo motor and chuck or a pulley system to actually twist the blinds. These concepts were narrowed down in multiple concept, gener multiple concept selection exercises, of which included the generation of a concept poster here in which we combined these components, the user inputs, power, blind operation, blind me operation mechanism, and mechanical interface. Here you can see each component is randomly connected with another. This allowed us to view each component and its benefits in a relatively unbiased state. What did each component add when it was put into a random system? This evaluation was ultimately beneficial in the selection of a final prototype. On top of this, we also conducted a gallery method in which this poster, along with our other forms of our concepts, were presented to the class and we were left with notes on what others felt on our design. It's very helpful to get outside eyes on a project you've been looking at for a long time. On top of this, we also did a concept screening in which we numerically valued each concept and were able to determine a numerical sol solution of which was best. You can also see here on the left is our initial prototype containing a servo motor and chuck connection using this pencil here to represent the rod that twisted the blinds open and closed. It should also be noted that we left the Arduino and breadboard open. We did this to allow our DIY customers to add their own electronic components to potentially improve the product, however this is not necessary. Once this had been completed, a failure modes and effects analysis was conducted. To do this, the team identified all potential failure modes of the system, of which there were four. Two of these were notable, um, slip between the chuck and the servo motor itself, along with the lack of light provided to the light sensors. Slip between the, ch the chuck and the servo motor would result in no torque delivered to the system and thus a failure of operation on the blinds. And a lack of light to the light sensors would also not provide enough voltage to actually signal the system to operate. We then noticed though that the failure modes and effects analysis does takes into account more than just the severity of each failure. It also takes into account the occurrence, the number of occurrences, and the method of detection. While the potential occurrence for each of these was roughly similar, we found that detection methods for slip between the servo and chuck were manageable and possible, while a lack of light was very hard to detect from a technical standpoint and provide a customer with some solid feedback as to why their system was not functioning. Risk priority numbers were then associated with the results of each failure mode and we found that the light sensor had the highest risk priority number with the chuck slip being the second highest.
This allowed us to focus future efforts on improving the design, seeing that there were areas that clearly needed to be worked on. Once this had been completed, we were then able to begin construction of a final prototype, doing so um, with SolidWorks. You can see here on the left, our CAD model of the system. Here, you have the mounting bracket, which runs on slides, so while being adjustable in one direction is not universal. Again, we have the Arduino and breadboard left open, and it should be noted here that a wall is hidden so that the location of the servo motor can be seen. These walls on each side come off as to access the wires on the Arduino through a hole cut in the side, along with wire connections to the servo. They pin right back in, to provide an aesthetic solution to the issue. Here on the right, you can see our most recent working prototype. This is not a visual representation of our product. However, due to the difficulty of mounting cardboard onto the system, we made the system as functional as possible without much concern to the visual appeal of it, seeing that it is not actually the final design. Using these CAD files, um, manufacturing quotes were submitted to Proto Labs to gain a better understanding of our price estimates from earlier in the semester. This allowed us to generate a full beer bill of materials and actually evaluate which manufacturing method we were going to use. Our bill of materials included buying Arduinos in bulk, buying servo motors in bulk, and obviously buying the plastic casings in bulk. Our quotes from Protolab showed that injection, injection molding was a much more profitable form of manufacturing for this product, seeing that after roughly about 25 units made, um, injection molding became more economically feasible. Um, you can see here an injection molding quote for the main component that houses the system. This, continued, um, this battle of 3D printing versus injection molding can also be seen on our um, break-even analysis. Here, we've conducted the break-even analysis using injection molding, finding that roughly 1,213 units get us back out of the hole into zero dollars, and that's when profit will finally start to accumulate. However, had we done this with 3D printing, this break-even number would have been much higher. Um, so in order to maximize profit, it was decided that injection molding was the best form of manufacturing for us. It should also be noted that our economic model is a scenario one model and maximum profits are proportional to the maximum units sold. We also discovered that we had estimated our variable costs to be around $10 earlier in the project. But after receiving these quotes and um, pricing from the retailers of both the servos and the Arduinos, we found it to be closer to $21.60. Had we had more time, better material selection, um, and better retailers could have been found, potentially dropping this price a lot closer to the desired $10 and thus increase the profit. <clears throat> After this had been completed, the team reflected on the process and came to a few conclusions of what would have been added had there been more time. A universal mounting bracket became the clear first add had we had more time. Um, making the blinds fit uni making the automatic blind system fit universally onto blinds would not only increase the size of our market but also potential sales along with that. The second thing we noted that should probably be added would be a failure alert system. Um, something such as as simple as an LED that lights up when no power is supplied to the servo motor or things of this nature, giving the user some sort of input as to what what's going wrong in the system. It makes the, each system more reliable, more repairable, and ultimately more effective. The team learned a great deal from this design process, 
including the value of teamwork and respect. Communication is key whenever working on a team, and a team member should never feel afraid to ask or say something in a team meeting um, due to the reaction of his other team members. Um, especially towards the end of deadlines, it was seen that communication, understanding, and open-mindedness um, led to a much better functioning team. Along with this, open-mindedness in the design process itself is extremely important. Getting locked into a design very early in the process is a quick road to failure. You learn so much more about actually backing up the solutions you're using um, throughout the process that the chances of you picking the right design right off the bat are very slim and just keeping an open mind and being willing to change that design will often lead to vast improvements. Ultimately, we believe that Shadeblade will be a successful product and we hope you've enjoyed this presentation.